Hello, it's Pietro Zucco here from Messi Circuits, and today we are going to master the command line interface from Zero to Hero, part one. The command line interface or terminal is usually seen as a dark screen full of characters associated with some sort of hacking or advanced level programming skills. Nowadays, it's quite hard to be exposed to the command line if you are using a computer or a tablet. But back in the day, even for affordable home computers, typing comments in a prompt was the norm. What we are going to learn here works straight out of the box on Linux and macOS. On Windows, there is a native Windows command line interface, but it's different. To follow this video, you can install the WSL Windows subsystem for Linux, or you can use a virtual box to emulate a Linux machine, or you can use Docker to run a Linux container. Let's start quickly on the Mac, but if you are using Linux, feel free to skip to the next chapter. The times are below in the description. In macOS, it's very simple. Go to the applications, find a folder called Utilities, open it, and there you have the terminal app. In Ubuntu, it's very simple. Go to the applications and then type terminal click on it and then you have it that's the terminal first a bit of context and history about the command line interface in the past we didn't have a graphical user interface with buttons windows a mouse and a pointer the only way for a user to interact with an operating system was through the command line interface linux and in all these different flavors and macOS are all descendant from unix in their core so what we are going to learn here is going to be applicable to a vast array of operating systems because it is so old the command line interface had a huge amount of development and improvement on it during the years and nowadays it's one of the most powerful and important tools for every developer or system administrator what is the shell you will hear this term a lot and from now on we will refer to the command line interface mostly as the shell so imagine your computer as several layers the lower layer is the hardware with the memory cpu and all the physical things that you can touch smell and break exist then we have an operating system which is linux or macOS or windows and so forth the operating system is basically a massive group of programs and utilities that communicate at a very low level to that hardware and provide us with a programming interface that we can use to access the computer resources. For our purposes, the next layer is the shell and it's called in that way because it somehow covers shells the operating system. The shell is the one providing us with the prompt that we can use to execute comments and interact with our operating system. The command line interface contains the shell and there are many shells available, but we are going to focus on the most popular, which is bash for Linux and ZSH for macOS. We can treat these two almost the same for our purposes. So enough theory and let's get our hands dirty. What you see here is one terminal that I have on a Debian operating system, which is a flavor of Linux. So the first command I want you to type on your command line is ls. In my case, if I type ls, press enter, I see absolutely no result. Your situation might be different. For example, here on the right, I just opened the terminal for my current computer, macOS. So if I type ls, you can see a bunch of files and directories. That's because in my system I have this and on the one on the left, there is nothing there. So you might have some differences between what you see here and what you see on your computer. Now let's pass an option to ls, in this case, hyphen a. This is a parameter that we pass to this command. If we hit enter, now we see some output. What we are doing here is that one thing is the command, and then after that, we can pass parameters, options to modify its behavior. So what was going on here is that uh, you see all these files with a dot in front of them. Well, in Unix, that's Linux, macOS, every file that has a dot is basically hidden. You don't see it. And in a, in way, in a way to see it, you have to pass a parameter to the command ls which is going to list the files in that directory. This hyphen A is going to show all the files, not only those visible, but also those invisible. Usually these files with a dot in front are very important. 
that's why they are hidden because you don't want the user to access them for example with a file explorer then see them and delete them by accident so the dot in front is going to hide them from the normal view that you might have in a file explorer another command that you want you to learn is the command man from manual so if you type man space ls it's going to give you the documentation of the command ls and this is very useful you can find this on google of course but if you are just on a command line you can always use this resource to access the documentation of a particular command you're interested to in this case ls is from list directories and contents and we can see here that hyphen a is do not ignore entries starting with a dot it's actually documenting and explaining you each option what it does Usually a command has this format. You have the command name and then you have some options and then you can also pass a file name. In order to navigate in the interface of the manual, you press the arrow keys up and down to go up and down the, the text and to quit you just as it's indicated here, you can press the Q key and it will going to come back to your uh, terminal. The next command is the one called pwd, it's telling you in which directory you are located in that very moment. In this case, I am in the directory home slash Zuko. Zuko is my user, yours will be different. And if you're in a Linux machine, it will be here slash home. But if you're in a Mac, your user directory will be slash users slash your username. The next command is mkvir, and this is for making directory. So for example, in this case, I don't have any useful directory in my home uh, folder. So I'm gonna create one, for example, documents. Now, if I type ls, I can see something because documents doesn't have a dot in front. So it's a viable, it's visible. I can also create more than one directory with one command. Make dir movies pictures, downloads, if I hit enter and then ls, we can see that those directories have been created. Imagine doing this on a graphical interface. You have to point where you want to create it and then right uh, button of the uh, mouse, select new uh, folder. It takes a lot of time. Here you just one command and you created three directories in one shot. Another option I want you to learn about the command ls is hyphen l. It is going to give you a more detailed view of the files in your directory. For example, here is telling me the time of creation of these folders that we just created. And it's going to tell me the group and the user they belong to. And is also telling me here by the D at the beginning that it is a directory. For the time being, just ignore this cryptic part. We will learn that later. Okay, so now we can list the files, we know in which directory we are, we can create directories. The next step will be to create a file. To do that, we want to create a text file on the document folder. So how do I navigate to the document folder? To do that, there is a command called cd, change directory. So I type cd and then documents, the name of the folder, the directory you want to get into, hit enter, and here you can see that in the prompt it changed and it's showing you the directory you are in. Anyway, don't trust this all the time, not because it doesn't, it's not accurate, but because you don't have always this information in other terminals. You might have a different prompt in another computer. So the way to trust in which directory you are located in this moment is PWD that we used before. And this is the one confirming that we are actually in the documents directory. Now we want to create a file, in this case, a text file. But for that, we are gonna use a text editor. There are several command line interface text editors available, but the one of the easiest one to use is called Nano. Then you put the name of the file that you want to create, in this case, test.txt. Hit enter, and we get into this interface. Here we can just immediately start typing the text that we need to write. Hello, this is a test. When we finish editing our file, we can see here on the bottom that we have several options. This symbol here, the caret, is identifi identifies the key control on your keyboard. So if you press control and at the same time press one of the other letters here, the other characters in your keyboard, 
then it will execute the function the, that is indicated here. For example, we I want to write this file. I just finished editing it and I want to write it on the disk. So I press Control and then the key O. So Control O and it's confirming so the file name to write is going to be test.txt, which is the file that we use initially when we open Nano. So I press Enter and it's telling me wrote two lines. So this line here and one more here that I just press return. So that information is telling you what's happening in this interface. Now that we are done, we want to exit Nano. And to do that, we can see here, we just press Control X and that will exit the text editor. Now, if we list the contents of this folder, we can see that the file test.txt has been created at this time. You can also see that here there is not a D anymore, meaning that this file is not a directory, it's just a regular file. Another command that I want you to learn is the one called rm, which is remove. So be very careful with this command here because it's going to remove a file or a directory. And the difference is that in a graphical environment, usually the files that you remove are going to end up in the BIM. So you can recover them later. But here you can't. If you remove something with RM, your file is lost forever. So be very, very careful in which directory you are and which file you are going to remove. In this case, I am in the documents folder in the documents directory. Then I list the contents. I have this file here, which is test.txt that we just created. And I want to delete this file. So remove test.txt txt press enter and the file is gone depending on the configuration of your system sometimes it might ask you if, to confirm that and you can configure this later we will see how to do that but just be careful because in this case for example i just removed that file and there is no way for me to recover it now let's get back a little bit on time and say that we still have this file we didn't delete it and let's say that we have another folder here which is called text files. So I want to move this file test.txt to text files. So there is a command called mv for moving. So I can type test.txt and then this is the origin and the next part will be the destination. In this case text files which is the folder, the directory that we just created. So this command, look at this, is going to move this source destination that's the folder we want to move it we do that and then list again we see that the file disappeared because it is inside the text files for uh, directory i can also do ls hyphen l and then text files the name of the directory i want to look into if i hit enter i can see the results of the contents of text files directory but I'm still in the documents directory. So if you, if you get a little bit lost, get back to the video, you can see how that happens. Basically, you're in the documents directory. You can list the files that are inside another directory without the need of moving to another directory. So now let's move to text files. CD text files. Enter. Now we are in the home Zuko documents text files directory. If I list the content here, we can see the test dot txt that we created now the move command can also be used to change the name to rename a file so in this case it's test dot txt let's change into from source in this case test txt to hello dot txt for example so remember source destination we hit enter and list the content we have the name of the file changed to hello okay now let's get back from that directory one level. We are in text files, we want to come back to documents. To do that, we use the command cd dot dot. So this dot dot is going to move us before, one level before the one we are in. So we are now in documents and the contents is the folder text files. Now remember the command rm to remove a file. We can also use this command to remove an entire directory, but be very careful because when we do this, it's going to remove everything inside that directory. The files, other directories inside, is going to be a massive distraction. So be very, very careful how you use this command.
the option to remove the directories are for recursive. What it's going to do is going to remove everything that is finding one thing after the other. Here we type the name of the directory and when we hit enter, repeat, be very, very careful what you're doing here. It's gone. Now, list in the files, there's no more directory there. There's absolutely nothing. We lost everything inside that directory, so be careful. Finally, if you type just CD and hit enter, it's going to move you from wherever any directory you are back to your home directory. And if you type CD space hyphen, it's going to move you back to whatever directory you were before. It's basically a way to move in back and forward from when you are to another place and then you come back to whenever you were. Let's refresh a little bit before we finish. So ls is going to list files in a directory. ls-a is going to list hidden files that have a dot. ls-l is going to give you a more detailed output of the files that exist in that directory. You can also concatenate options. For example, ls hyphen al is going to do the two operations of showing the files with a dot and also give you more detailed output. rm is to remove a file. rmr is to do it rec recursively. So you are going to delete a folder in that way. Move is to move a file from one location to another and also to rename a file. pwd is your personal working directory is going to tell you in which directory you are located in that very moment. CD is to change directory and the different options that we had is CD by itself is going to move you back to your home directory. CD dot dot is going to move you one level before the level you are in that directory. And CD, the name of the directory that you want, is going to move you into that directory. Then make dir for creating directories and you can also put several directories one after the other to create more, more than one in one single command. Nano is a very easy to use text editor. I personally use another one which is called Vim, which is more complicated to use but it's more powerful. That is something that you can learn. There are many, many of them available, but this one is easy and is everywhere. And finally, if you forget about command, the options that you can pass to a command, you can always use the command man manual. And then here you pass the name of the command. It could be ls, cd, remove anything that you want. And finally, before we conclude, just a little bit idea of the file structure of a Unix system. So the command cd allows us to navigate, right? So now if I type, type cd just slash and PWD is going to show me just that. And that is the beginning of your file system, the root basically of the tree that compose your file system. If I type ls here, we see a lot of files. Let's do it in this way so we can see them easily. So you can see that in this case, we have several folders and also links and other things that we still don't know, which are part of the system. This is the root file system. You can see here that there is a folder called home. So we can do cd home and then if it list the content, this is my user. It will be yours in your case. cd your user and then you are in your home folder again. So when you go to the root file system, whatever you see here is basically the contents of the operating system that you are in this case in Linux. It will be the same if you do that in Mac OS. So think about the hard drive, not if you're coming from Windows, there's no such a thing as C, D, E or anything like that. You Everything starts from the root of the, the hard drive. And from there, that's the, the slash indicates the root of the file system It's the main folder there. And then from there, you access all the other folders in the system, everything else. Even if you plug a USB drive, for example, is going to appear as a folder, as a directory that you can access directly. It's not going to be a letter associated with that USB drive. So from there, you can navigate everywhere. And that's a concept when we said about moving one level up, one level down, is because we are moving through that tree of different files in your file system. I hope you have fun with this and in the next video we will get into more details covering pipes, redirections and creating batch scripts. As always, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.